here is our fuse box. We're going to locate our run slash stop relay of the wiper motor in the fuse box. So this relay over here should be our run slash stop relay of the wiper motor. So I'm going to remove it. It's a five pin relay. Now these big pins over here are the load side of the relay. And then this over here is the control side of the relay. Okay. Now I'm going to go in the truck and turn the key on with the key on. We're going to test for two powers at the relay socket. We're going to use a test light. So I'm going to connect my test light to battery ground. When I touch power test light lights, I'm going to go in the truck and turn the key on right there. As you can see, the key is on. I'm not stuffing my test light in these pins. Okay. So it looks like the tip of my test light is big. We are not making good contact here. I'm going to get a test lead that's going to go into these relay pins. So let's test our load side first. We should have power on one side of the load side. So right there, as you can see, we have power there. We got no power here, so that's good. Okay. So this over here tells me that our fuse inside the fuse box under the dash is good. So now we're going to test this side, the control side. One pin over here should have power. No power there. No power here. We do have power here. Okay, so the rule of thumb is usually two powers at the relay, which we have. We have power here and we have power here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to bypass the relay to check for our motor and the circuit on the other side of the wiper motor. So we do have power over here. Actually, let's look at the wiring diagram. So what we just did was we checked pin one and pin five. So these two pins over here have power, which tells me that this fuse over here is good. Now I'm going to send power on pin three. If we send power on pin three, if the motor is good, the motor should work. So now let's go send power on pin three and see what happens. Pin three is going to be this pin over here. So the other side of the load side of the, of the relay. Okay. Now I'm going to use a fused jumper wire. That way, if we have something shorted in the circuit, we don't, we won't burn anything. So my, so this side of the jumper wire is going to be connected to battery positive. Okay. Now I'm going to touch this test lead. Let's see if our wiper motor is going to work. Did you guys hear that? So when I send power down this test lead, our wipers work. Watch that. Can you guys see the wipers? I hope you can see the wipers there. So I'm jumping this, watch that. So when I let off our wipers stop working. Okay. So what does this tell me? This tells us that the wiper motor is good. The ground to the motor is good also. So our problem is either the relay or the control of the relay. Okay. So since we are connected to the control side of the relay. Okay. 
No, I'm sorry. We are control. We are connected to the load side, the other side of the load side of the relay. I hope this is making sense. Now I'm going to connect to this pin. Okay. I'm gonna now connect my test light to battery positive. Okay. I'm gonna connect this. Okay. So test light is connected to battery positive. So now we should have ground on this circuit when I press the wiper switch. So I'm gonna press the wiper switch. I'm pressing the wiper switch. We're gonna look at the test light. Our test light doesn't come on. So what I'm doing right now is I'm testing the control side of the relay. Okay. All right, so let me show you on the wiring diagram what I just did. So here's what I did, guys. We checked pin one and pin five. We have power at pin one and pin five. I sent power on pin three. When we sent power on pin three, power went through this wire, through this red wire, through the relay, down to the motor, and the motor came on, so we were able to turn the wipers on which told me that the motor is good, the ground is good, this leg of the circuit is good. Our problem is this pin over here, okay? Pin number two, the control side of this relay, okay? The control side of the relay, it has a problem. We have power at pin one, but the signal, the ground that comes from this control unit to energize this relay is not there, okay? so. We connected our test light to battery positive. We touched pin two, the test light did not come on. So when this module sends ground to this side of the relay, this gets energized and then the relay closes, then the motor works. So we are missing the control over here at the, at the relay, okay? So let's go back over here. I hope this makes sense. So. Now, what I'm doing is I'm connecting my, my test lead to this yellow wire, to pin two, okay? Pin two on the relay, okay? This here is pin two, which is coming from this yellow wire, okay? When we press the switch over here, this switch sends a signal to this module and then the module sends ground to this side of the relay then the relay gets energized and then the motor comes on the wiper motor comes on now the problem could be a bad switch that's not sending a signal to this module or we could have an open in this wire so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get to this leg of the circuit Okay, because we can check this leg of the circuit by going to this module, but getting to this module is a lot harder than getting to the switch. So I'm gonna get to the switch and we're gonna send, we're gonna be the switch and send our signal down here to see if our relay is gonna get energized. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to the switch so that we can check this leg of the circuit, okay? so. Let's get to the switch connector and do some tests. I wanna bypass the switch to see if our wiper system is gonna work. If the wipers work when we bypass the switch, then the problem is going to be the switch. If we don't have any voltages on these three wires, our problem is going to be the module, okay? So now let's go to the switch and do some tests at the switch. To get to the wiper switch electrical connector, we're gonna have to remove these two covers over here. This cover that covers the steering column. To remove this cover, we're gonna undo a couple bolts down here. There's a bolt in this hole. I mean, a couple of screws, Phillips screws. There's one here, and there's another one here, and then there's a third one over here. After I undo all these three bolts, this cover is gonna come out. 
and then this top one is gonna come out as well. When the top one comes out, we're gonna have access to the electrical connector of the wiper switch. And then we will do our test at the wiper switch electrical connector. I'm gonna get these covers off and then I'll bring you guys back up. I have removed the cover that covers the steering column right there. As you can see, we now have access to the electrical connectors of the multi-function switch. So now we're gonna do our tests at these wires. Now, before we continue diagnosing our wiper system, I want to show you the new electric vacuum pump that was delivered from the Ford dealership. So here is our brand new vacuum pump. Here is the part number. So this is the one that I first installed. This is the defective one. Okay, this is the Napa one, bad one. So now let's look at the OEM one. So this is what I'm gonna install. Look at this one. This one actually came with its bracket. Okay, let's install this vacuum pump and see what happens. So this is the aftermarket one, defective out of the box. This one is the OEM one. You see that? So it looks nice. So now let's take this to the vehicle and install it. I'm gonna connect this gauge to the pump. With the truck running, this pump should be pouring out vacuum. Okay, so now let's install this vacuum pump first. Let's fix the HVAC system before we continue with the diagnosis on the wiper system. Now we're gonna install our OEM electric vacuum pump. I'm gonna remove this bracket over here first. So we don't need this bracket anymore because the new one came with a new bracket. So I'm gonna remove this supply line. Okay, we're gonna get this from the old pump. Now I'm gonna get the new one. So see how nice this one looks. All right, so our new vacuum pump is installed. I'm gonna connect the electrical connector. Nice. All right, so now I'm gonna connect my vacuum gauge to the supply line that goes to the vacuum reservoir. Okay, so now let's go in the truck and start the engine. If this pump is good, when we start the engine, we should have a vacuum reading on this gauge. So let's start the truck.
So as you can hear, the truck is running. So now let's go to our vacuum pump and see what we got. So right there, check this out. We now have a vacuum reading on the vacuum gauge. Okay, so this is fixed guys. This is enough vacuum to actuate the actuators under the dash. Remember before, with the new vacuum pump from Napa, our gauge stayed at zero. But now we installed an OEM vacuum pump. We are reading about 13 inches of vacuum. So this is good. This is, this is fixed. Now I'm gonna go in the truck and turn off the engine. We're gonna connect our vacuum supply line to the vacuum reservoir and our HVAC system won't be stuck on defrost anymore. Okay, so this is good. Okay, we got a defective pump out of the box. We now have vacuum here. We're good to go. So now let's turn off the engine. So this is now gonna be fixed. So let's disconnect this. All right. So we're good to go. The vacuum pump is installed. Everything is reconnected. So now let's go in the truck and start the engine and see if our HVAC system is gonna move from defrost to vent. Remember before we were stuck on defrost. Now I'm gonna turn on the AC. Whoa. Now we got some air coming from the vent. We are not stuck on defrost anymore. Let me grab a piece of paper so I can put it over here. You see that our piece of paper is gonna start getting blown. I don't know if you can see here. So now I'm switched to vent. Watch this. I'm gonna switch to my feet. You see I have this paper on the vent over here. I'm gonna go to vent. It's not staying. See this? So we're good to go. This is fixed, guys. So we're good. So we got one problem fixed. So now let's continue with our wiper system. So now we have access to the multifunction switch electrical connectors. We're gonna do our test at the wiring over here to figure out why our wipers are not working. We have to figure out if the problem is the switch or the wiring between the switch and the control unit that's behind the fuse box under this panel, okay? So before we do that, before we test the wiring, I wanna show you the wiring diagram again so we can talk about what tests we're gonna do to find the problem. Remember, when we jump the relay under the hood, our wiper blades work, okay? So a portion of the circuit is good because the wiper blades work when we jump the relay. So let's go to the wiring diagram. Let's look at it and talk about our next test. This is our multi-function switch. And as you can see, we have three wires on the multi-function switch over here. So this wire, this dark blue wire, and then this light green wire with the orange stripe and then this pink wire with a yellow tracer. Now these wires go from the switch to the generic electronic module. Okay, so from the switch to this module over here. And then we have three more wires, I mean four more wires. So this yellow wire with the white tracer, light blue wire, and then gray wire with the light blue tracer, and then tan wire 
with a red tracer. And these wires, I believe, go to the fuse box. Okay, the fuse box under the hood, right here. Left side of engine compartment, battery junction box. So this is the fuse box where we were doing our test earlier, okay? Now, when we jump this high-low relay, when we jump this, our wiper blades work. So the problem is not on this side of the circuit because from the motor itself, from this component over here, which is the motor, so from the motor to the relay, the wiring on this side is good. So we're going to focus on this side of the circuit. So from the switch down to this control unit over here, this generic electronic module, and then all the way to the fuse box under the hood. Now, if we look closely over here, you will notice that there is a wire here, this dark blue wire. This dark blue wire says signal return, and it goes through the switch and then comes over here to this wiper. And then we have another wiper here. Now, since this says signal return, so I believe this is a ground. So this control unit over here, this generic electronic control unit sends ground through the switch and then the switch grounds this wire when it's at this position. So if this wiper moves from off to high, so if we make a connection between this point and this point over here, the ground will be sent to this control unit and then this control unit is going to turn on, in this case, the washer pump. Because if we ground this pink wire, okay, pink and yellow, if we ground this pink and yellow wire, our washer pump should work. And then if we ground this light blue and orange wire, if we follow this wire, it goes to the control side of the relay. So there is power on this side of the relay. We already checked these fuses. So this fuse is good. Okay, so this fuse is good, there's power going down to the relay, so we already checked that. If we send ground over here, this coil is going to get energized, and then this wiper, this arm, is going to move, and then power is going to flow, okay, from this side down, okay, to the motor. Now, our wiper motor is not working and our windshield washer motor is also not working. Now to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to focus on this circuit over here, this washer pump circuit. So this control unit over here, this generic electronic module sends ground to the switch, okay, through this wire. And then when the switch receives ground, when we turn on the washer pump, the switch grounds this wire, this pink wire, then ground goes to this control unit over here, and then the control unit turns on the pump. Now, you might say, why are you talking about the pump circuit while you're trying to diagnose the windshield wiper motor? I believe whatever that's affecting the windshield wiper motor is also affecting the washer pump, okay? Because these two systems are not working, or these two circuits are inoperative. What I'm going to do is let's go back in the truck. Let's test this blue wire first. Let's make sure we have signal return over here, which is ground. We can test this with a test light. I'm not sure if this is going to carry enough current to turn on a test light. But if this doesn't turn on the test light with a multimeter, we should have maybe 0.1 volt or 0.5 volt. So we should have at least 100 or 500 millivolts on this blue wire. OK, which will tell me that this control unit is sending ground to the switch. The other test we could do is we can be this control unit over here, or we can be their switch, we can actually ground this pink and yellow wire. If I send ground down this pink and yellow wire, if everything up here is good, okay, from this control unit all the way up, if everything over here is good, my washer pump should work. If I ground this wire, my washer pump should work. So two tests we're going to do in the truck. Let's test this dark blue wire to make sure there's ground over here. And then the other test we're going to do is 
we're going to send ground down this pink and yellow wire to see if our washer pump is going to come on. So let's go in the truck and do that. I got our multifunction switch off the steering column. So we're going to turn the key on. And then I'm going to turn on this flashlight so we can have more light here. Now we're going to do our test at these two wires. We have this dark blue wire and this pink wire with the yellow tracer. This dark blue wire is coming from the control unit. I think the uh, jam module, that's how they call it, generic electronic module. Now there should be ground on this dark blue wire. So we're going to use our multimeter to check that. Right now my multimeter is connected to ground through the power probe. So if I send power on this red test lead of the multimeter, we should see system voltage on the multimeter screen. So watch this. So right there. So our battery is getting weak. That's okay. I will put a battery charger on it. Now let's test this and see if we have ground over here. We got nothing. And I'm making good connection, guys. Okay, my back probing tool is right in there. As you can see, we got nothing on the multimeter. We should have at least 0 0.1 volt or 0 0.5 volt. Okay, so now we're going to bypass this switch and then we're going to send ground down this pink wire with a yellow tracer to see if our washer pump is going to work. So I'm going to move my back probing tool to this wire here. Because in case we have an open on this dark blue wire, because we could have an open between the switch and the jam module back here on this dark blue wire and that's going to prevent this test from working. Okay, so now we're going to bypass this blue wire, this dark blue wire. Now I have a test light down here. This test light is connected to ground. Okay, now if I send power on this side of the test light, the test light should light. Right there, test light light. So I have ground on this side of the test light. So now I'm going to send ground down this pink wire. So if everything was fine, our washer pump should come on right now. And as you can see, nothing is happening. Okay. Okay, so at this point, I know what's wrong with this. I believe we have a defective jam module, okay? The generic electronic module is bad. The module is not sending ground to the switch. And then when we send ground down this orange wire, nothing is happening. If the jam module was good, when I send ground down this wire, our washer pump was going to come on. Let's look at the wiring diagram again so I can show you this one more time and then I will get access to the jam module which is down here. Our generic electronic module is behind the fuse box over here. In case you still have questions, let me take you to the wiring diagram and then I'm going to remove this fuse box so we can get access to the jam module. So in case you have a question about what I was doing, we checked this wire. As you can see, it says signal return. So we're supposed to have ground on this wire. And that ground is supposed to come from the jam module, the generic electronic module. So this module sends ground to the switch and then ground goes throughout the switch. There are a couple of resistors here to change the current flow that goes back to this module to cause the wiper motor to spin at different speeds, okay? If this was working fine, this control unit was supposed to send ground down this wire and then the ground was gonna travel through the switch and all the way down here and down over here and then when we move the switch so the wiper on the switch from the off position to the high position 
So ground was going to travel from this point down this wire and then tell this computer to turn on the washer pump. Now, if we send the ground down this wire, it's supposed to tell this computer to turn on the washer pump. And since when we send the ground down this wire, nothing happens, this tells me that this jam module is most likely bad. So now the next test we're going to do is let's go to this module and check our powers and grounds at this module. And then if we have good power and good ground at this module, and then we're going to ground this wire at the module. When we ground it at the module, if the washer pump doesn't come on, that will tell me that this generic electronic module is bad. So now now let's get down to the jam module so we can do some tests there. 